Hi everyone! In this week's Chemistry Scholarship tutorial session, I'm taking up question 3a from the 2017 exam. In this question, we have a contaminated water solution, and it's contaminated with a few different metal ions. Uh, metal ions in solution can be removed by precipitating them out. So right now they're dissolved, they're in aqueous form, but if we add something to it, maybe we can turn it into a solid that precipitates, so it's non-soluble and we can remove it from the solution. This is quite useful in everyday life. So, uh, precipitating ions separately allows the precipitates to be refined for further use if you want to collect them and use them for something else. Anyway, so we have a liter sample of this wastewater. It has a pH of 2, and it's known to contain a certain number of moles of aluminium 3 plus ions, calcium 2 plus ions, and iron 3 plus ions. We need to outline a strategy to individually precipitate the three ions using only concentrated sodium hydroxide solution and a pH meter. Our answer should involve some calculations and they give us the solubility product constants for these three metal ions when they form an insoluble solid with hydroxide. Okay, so what should we do first? Well, if you're completely lost, and I'm going to approach this question as though I'm completely lost and I'm just overwhelmed with all this information, whenever it comes to a solubility product question, the very first thing I always say to students is to write out a balanced chemical equation. So let's do that first. When in doubt, write a balanced chemical equation. And that's what you see right here. So uh, I made sure to include states of matter, so I've got solids on the left side where my precipitates are, and on the right side I've got aqueous ions uh, labeled as well. At level 3 for excellence you definitely need uh, state symbols on your equations. Okay, now what to do next? Well, when in doubt further, I always say to students after writing a balanced equation, the second thing you always do with these types of questions is write the solubility product expression. Okay, so you can see that there. We've got the solubility product expression. Okay, now what to do now? Well, if you're still in doubt about what to do, let's take a look at what they gave us in the question. They gave us a bunch of numbers. What happens if we plug those in? Will we have something uh, solvable? Well, let's see. They gave us a bunch of, con or not concentrations, they gave us the number of moles of um, metal ions, and they gave us the Ks con uh, constant as well. Now the cool thing about this is because we have a one liter solution of wastewater, the number of moles of the metal ion is the same as the concentration. Remember concentration is moles per liter, so if we take the number of moles of a metal ion divided by one liter, hey guess what, it's the same number. So we can plug the number of moles of metal ions into this equation because that number is the same as its concentration. So there we go. I plugged in what I know. I plugged in the Ks values and I plugged in the concentrations of the metal ions and for all three of these solubility product expressions I see that I have one unknown in all three equations and that's the concentration of hydroxide. Okay, I love equations where there's only one unknown that tells me I can solve for it and I'm probably on the right track. So let's solve for that. I figured out the concentration in moles per liter of hydroxide uh, needed in all three scenarios to uh, cause this equilibrium between the, soli the insoluble solid and the ions that are dissolved. Okay, now what's this question all about? So I, I approached this question as though I was lost and I just, uh, just kind of wandered through this problem, uh, luckily following it on the right path. Now this question is about figuring out how to precipitate these metal ions that are dissolved. A precipitation only happens in a saturated solution so we need to assume that we want to make a saturated solution. What does it need to be saturated with? Well, it's got some metal ions in it, but to be in equilibrium with its precipitate, in order to form that precipitate, we need to have a saturated solution of hydroxide. That is the other ion needed to precipitate out the metal ion in our equation, right? So, because our wastewater has a pH of 2, as it said in the question, it's not high enough. It's undersaturated right now. So that's what the sodium hydroxide is for in this question. We need to add more sodium hydroxide until the concentration of hydroxide ions in our wastewater is each of the three values we've just calculated on the screen. When it approaches and reaches that value, at that point when it reaches that value, the, the corresponding metal ion will precipitate out of solution. So we're approaching the answer to the question. What we're going to do with the sodium hydroxide 
and with the pH meter is add the hydroxide to our wastewater until the concentration of hydroxide reaches the calculated amount. Okay, but a pH meter doesn't tell us how much uh, hydroxide we've got in solution. It tells us the pH. So, thinking back to level 2 chemistry, where we did pH calculations quite regularly, we know how to transform a concentration of hydroxide into a pH. We do that with two equations from level 2, one with the Kw constant and its equation, and of course the regular pH log equation. And when I plug in the hydroxide concentration into those equations and calculate the pH for each metal ion, I see that at a pH of 3.76, I'll have enough hydroxide in solution now to precipitate out the aluminium. At a pH of 12.2, and when I keep adding a lot more uh, hydroxide, I'll have enough hydroxide ions in solution to precipitate out the calcium. And just a wee bit after the start, the very first ion that actually precipitates out will be iron, because we're starting with our wastewater at a pH of 2, and as we add hydroxide, when it eventually reaches 2.26, which is pretty soon, um, the iron will precipitate out at that pH. So, in conclusion, uh, we've calculated at what pH each of the metal ions will precipitate out. We figured that out by figuring out the concentration of hydroxide ions needed to saturate the solution because we realized with solubility product and uh, sparingly soluble solids in equilibrium with aqueous ions, equilibrium is only established in a saturated solution and our wastewater is not saturated yet which is why we add the sodium hydroxide to it and we've calculated that out just using our plain old equilibrium knowledge about solubility product expressions and plugging in known values cool that's that's it short and sweet thanks very much bye